If you watch the Mr. Bass channel at all, you know that I love fishing tackle. I am a tackle junkie. And I also love storage solutions. I love figuring out how to store and transport and handle my tackle in a way that helps me on the water maximize my time fishing. And I ran into this box uh, quite a while ago now. I've actually got an older video where I talk about this, but I wanted to give an update because I've used it uh, for quite a while now and just kind of let you know about this box and why I like it and why you may want to consider it as well. This is a product by Groove Fishing. And Groove Fishing is kind of unique in that they make storage solutions that are kind of one of a kind. No, nobody has anything really that similar to, to, to their products. This is called the Big Jig Box. And when you look at it, it's not that big. It's 9 inches by 7 inches by 2 inches deep. And it's almost the exact same size as this Plano box. Um, and I use these Plano boxes quite a bit. And I'm going to kind of show you. This is a typical jig box that I might use and how it compares to the big jig box by Groove Fishing. This box sells for $29.99. They claim that it holds up to 115 jigs. Now, when they say jigs, uh, especially when they're saying 115 jigs, they're not talking about skirted jigs. There's no way you could put 115 flipping jigs in here. There's no way you could put 115 swim jigs in here. You can put flipping jigs, you can put swim jigs, but nowhere near 115. All right, let's open this thing up so I can show you how it works. One interesting feature about all the, the Groove boxes is they don't have a typical latch system. They use magnets, and these are very strong neodymium. Is that how you pronounce it? Neodymium magnets. Uh, there, <clears throat> there's a magnet here, a magnet here, and a magnet here, and it actually does a very a very good job of holding the lid closed. As you can see, I got the box upside down. I've never had it pop open on me. Um, they're strong. They're, they are strong, sturdy magnets. And then they have this slit silicone mat that is just basically glued. And you can see there's five of these mats. And you can just use the slits to stick your hooks in. So. They call this a jig box, but you could use this as a hook box. It would easily hold all of your hooks and hold them and organize them very, very well. Instead of, say, like the styrofoam slit cases. This is actually much more heavy duty than a styrofoam slit case box. That's an option. But I use it for jigs, and I'm going to kind of show you uh, what I do with this. Here is one of my jig boxes that I've got full at the moment. And this is really what it looks like when I fish with it. The only thing I did differently with this is I rearranged and added a few different items to this box that you may not uh, generally have all together in the same box, but I wanted to show you what it would hold. So take a close look. There's a lot of jigs in here, as you can see. I've got flipping and pitching jigs. I've got some heavy football style jigs. I've got Denny Brower's big old jig there. I forget what they call that. I've got um, these here I've got are uh, Jewel Baits Pro Spider Jigs, one of my favorite jigs. I've got some Chatter Baits here, basically um, bladed jigs. I've got uh, some bladed jigs that don't have skirts on them, just to kind of show you how that would work. I've got some swim bait heads in here. 
I've got some jig heads that uh, you might use for say a Domeki rig. They fit in here great. I've got underspins in here just to show you that you can put an underspin in and it works just fine for that. Really anything with a hook you can put in this big jig box and it holds it. Now I did learn, they actually tell you this kind of in the, uh, in the directions, but uh, I, I didn't read that part and I didn't figure out until later that the most effective way to put jigs in this box is to put them hook point first. So let me show you here in the empty box, the new empty box, kind of what I'm talking about. If you take a standard jig head here with no skirt on it and you put it in this way, uh, that, that will work. But a couple of problems here. One, uh, you've got exposed hook points all along here, which uh, get hooked and snagged on things, including your fingers. And if you're using a skirted jig, um, it's it's harder to see your jigs. But if you put if you put the jig, so let me just kind of give you an example. If you put the jig in this way. You can see the jig fine. I don't want to make it appear as though you can't see it at all. But once you start putting rows and rows and rows of them here, the jig skirts kind of get everywhere. And uh, they also don't stay in as well uh, if you put the back end of the hook in there. They will hold, but they just hold much better if you put the pointed end of the hook in. And then you can see that uh, you can see your jig just fine. And this is actually uh, a good way to identify what color jigs you've got. So look at the one here that I've got already loaded up. And you can see I've got blue jigs, I've got brown jigs, I've got some red jigs. They're pretty easy to see. I've got some white swim jigs here. Here I've got my chartreuse bright chatterbait, a reddish colored chatterbait. So this is one thing that I think makes the Groove Big Jig Box very appealing, is how easy it is to see your jigs and to, and to see them organized and separated well. So let's compare to a normal Plano style box. This box actually holds jigs very well. You can get a ton of jigs in here, no doubt about it. But look at how cluttered it is. Now I do separate them by color and you can tell this is like a Missouri Craw color. This is a black and blue color. This is a, a PB and J color, brown jig color, that kind of thing. But you don't really know uh, jig head size here until you pull them out. Now you can label, you can put labels on your deals and try to keep them separated that way. But, uh, and I have done that oftentimes, but I've found this is just so much simpler. All I got to do is look at the head size and I already know, you know, this is a bigger one. This is a smaller one. And I already know uh, what size jig, these are dirty jigs, flipping jigs. I already know that I have a uh, three eighths, half ounce, a three quarter ounce, and it's easy to tell which is which. Now, one thing they do say is that uh, it doesn't really hold big, heavy jigs. I kind of agree and I kind of disagree. Uh, here's why I kind of disagree. You can easily put big jigs in here. The bigger, the better, not a problem. Where you get in a prob problem is super big, thick hooks. A super big, beefy, fat, thick hook, like a super duty six aught uh, jig hook, doesn't fit in these slits ideally. Um, it's kind of hard to push them in. It's kind of hard to get them out. And I think that's why they say, you know, three quarter ounce jigs or smaller is probably what you should use in, in these jig boxes. 
Um, I really haven't had a problem with that, but I don't throw a ton of one ounce jigs, two ounce jigs, that kind of thing. If you're in the really big beefy jig market, this box probably does not make a lot of sense. Um, it's not waterproof. It uh, doesn't have any anti-rust uh, properties. You know, it doesn't have any of those chemicals to absorb rust. Um, I still have not found it to be much of a problem. It, it's a very sturdy, solid box. Um, everything about it I like. Uh, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. There are limitations to it. And just like most tackle boxes, I kind of go back and forth, back and forth. But this is a very solid, compact box. And I like compact for a lot of reasons. On the kayak, I really prefer compact. This is compact, and I can put a whole variety of jigs in here. If I'm going to go out on the water in the springtime, and I know I'm going to throw a bladed jig, I know I might throw a swim jig, I know I'm going to throw a Arky style jig, some sort of a flipping and pitching jig, um, I also know that I might need some shaky heads and uh, other jig heads, maybe some swim bait jig heads. You could literally load this whole box up with all of those and uh, it would work great. You can even uh, keep the trailers on your lures and put them in here. It does get a little more crowded and it's going to take up some of your jig head space. But all in all, you may really want to consider this box, especially if you're the kind of guy that hates digging through and picking out and trying to find the right size head jigs out of a bunch of other jigs. I mean, you know, it's just, that's just kind of what happens. Is it the end of the world? No, it's, it's not to have to do this. But this here, to me, it just looks so much better. And it's not about looks, it's about ease of use. And look how I can just find my jigs. I think that feature alone cannot be overstated. It's just an excellent feature. And I like the magnetic idea too. I like not having the latches. There are times when you absolutely need latches. You know, I don't want to mislead anybody. But generally speaking, I really like the Groove Fishing Big Jig Box. It's only 30 bucks. I think it's a, a very good deal for that. They also have, for your crappy and panfish jigs, they have a smaller uh, jig box called the Micro Jig Box. It's only like 17, 18 bucks. I'm thinking about getting one of those for my panfish jigs. And then uh, they also have this here called the Big Jig Launch Pad. And it's the same stuff that's in the big jig box. It's just got a sticky thing on the bottom and you can stick it on your boat. You can stick it on your kayak. And then you've got a really good spot to just put your jigs. Okay, here I am with my Hobie kayak. And uh, here is a launch pad I just installed. I've got one here and there. The Groove Fishing Big Jig Launch Pad. And let me just show you what you can do with this. You're on the water fishing and you want to have a few bladed jigs, chatter baits at the ready. Not a problem. You just stick the hook point in there and it's ready. How about a bladed jig with a trailer on it? Also not a problem at all check that out works just fine you could do it either direction you know if you uh, don't want your bladed head sticking on the outside of the boat just turn it around the other direction how about a spinner bait <clears throat> got a spinner bait right here same thing hook point in and it's good to go ned rig bait this is a great bait, by the way. Rabid baits, rabid foxtail. Of course, you can have all kinds of Ned heads, Ned, Ned rigs, all on your launch pad ready to go. This thing's very versatile. I've even got, look, here's a shaky head. Now, this is a pretty fat shaky worm. Normally I don't use this fat of a worm, but same thing. Just stick the hook point in the launch pad and 
you're good to go. And the good thing about this also is it, if you put the hook points in, they slide in and out of this silicone mat very, very easy. But you also don't have any hook points sticking out that you could snag on your clothing or on your fingers or on your fishing line. Really, really like this launch pad idea. I think I'm going to love it. I would be very interested to know if you've ever used the Groove Fishing Big Jig Box. If it's something you like, if it's something you dislike, I'd like to know that. Um, I am very interested in feedback, so anything you could put in the comments about this box would help me and it would also help the other viewers. Greatly appreciate that. I hope this was informative and helpful. If so, please consider subscribing to the channel. Smash that like button. Greatly helps the channel. I appreciate your support. Until next time, this is Mr. Bass. Happy fishing!